John chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep to thine own name those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold the glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovedest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the true Lord's Prayer. They call the Apostles' Prayer when they ask Jesus Christ to teach them how to pray. They call that the Lord's Prayer but he was in fact teaching the apostles how they should pray and not that they should say those words verbatim but the essence of true prayer we must pray for the father's will to be done we must pray that he send workers into the field um, we must pray intercessory prayer for others you notice in that prayer in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, Jesus Christ not one time prayed for himself. For beautiful prayer. It is how we should learn how to pray. Again, we see that the Lord is not praying for himself. He's interceding for his apostles and for those who might believe through, through their work. He's praying that we are one in him, that his love may be fulfilled in us and that we might love one another, that 
we might be one body of Christ. So he's interceding for the apostles. He's interceding for those who might believe um, for his church. And he not one time says, Father, strengthen me. And he is certain that the Father is going to answer his prayers because Jesus Christ did always those things that pleased the Father. He was perfect in every way, in his um, obedience, in his worship, in his thought, in his deeds, in uh, doing the Father's will. He never strayed from, from the Father. He was perfect in every way, shape, and form. He is our faithful high priest. He has left us an incredible legacy and an incredible example of how we need to live our lives and the proof that a human being can live a righteous life. Yes, he was fully human and he was fully God at the same time. But, being in flesh, he could have gone astray. He could have. But the will of the Father is what he came to do and he would not let down his Father because they were one. And we see that this prayer is an incredible tool for every believer to see what kind of prayer that our Father in Heaven responds to. And if we know that Jesus Christ was perfect in every way, if we know that He was God, and we have this prayer in the Gospel of John chapter 17 to learn from, who would not want to learn from the Master, from our Master, from our Good Shepherd who laid down His life for us that we could live in Him, opportunity to learn from Him, to be in His presence throughout eternity, to live a life of abundance in this world and eternal life in that which is to come. It's just, it's, it's phenomenal. I love the whole book of John. It is a very up close and personal um, Gospel. It is a completely different account from the other three synoptic Gospels, which are similar, which you can open and read side by side. And um, a lot of people think, a lot of scholars think that um, they had the books to refer to. They forget that it's the Holy Ghost that is guiding these, these men to write these words. The Holy Ghost indwells them and gives them the words, you know, guides their hand to write. So whatever he wants to portray through their pen, he's going to portray. He doesn't need for them to look at others, other Gospels. It's the same account from the same spirit. Too many times theologians um, try to um, articulate. They try to rationalize their thoughts, and they try to apply them to the Holy Ghost, and you simply can't do that. You know, if the Holy Ghost wanted to, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be blasphemous or anything like that, because I love him, he's indwelled me, but if he wanted to, he could take a Shih Tzu dog and give him the words and give him a pen, and that dog will write exactly what he wants him to. So to try and rationalize it, to try and explain it, it it's, it's inexplainable. You know, we serve an almighty God who can do all things at any time. And to try and explain with a rational mind and with our limited capacity, it diminishes the power of God. You know, a lot of things are a mystery to us. We will never even be able to conceive them because He is so far above us. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And the capacity, He is almighty. He is all wise. He is everywhere present. Can anyone explain that? No, no one can explain that. But we know it's fact. Same thing with the Gospels. There are certain reasons that he omits and that he adds. But he does this for his reason, for his purpose, that his will might be done. Read the Gospel of, of John, chapter 17, and learn how to pray from our Lord and Savior. It will enhance your prayer life. It will give you encouragement to ask the Father to, to enter to the throne of grace with boldness 
In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you.